And I know I can't wait to hear those uh, the, the stories that she has. Her third speech she's working on tonight, and the objectives of the speech is to pretty much get to the point. She's to select a speech topic and determine its general and specific purposes. Organize the speech in a manner that best achieves those purposes. Make sure that the beginning, the body, and the conclusion also enforce those purposes. She's to project sincerity and conviction and to strive not to use notes, which doesn't mean she can. So it's just what she's kind of working towards. And so the name of the speech tonight is Mostly About My Father. And here to give us her speech tonight is Inta Short. I know. <laughs> Inta, Inta. Madam Chair, a fellow Toastmasters, and the Welcome uh, Guest Sandy. Uh, this came a little bit as a surprise to me. I've been here less than a month since my first speech. I wasn't totally uh, ready, and uh, also uh, I didn't get the name for it until I was here. Somebody last time told me to move this one because I'm a short person. Okay. okay. And uh, surely I'm not the only person, child if you will, who adored her father. And uh, that's what I would like to talk about today. And uh, my father, I haven't seen him for many years. He passed away very early at the age of 74. And uh, I'm going to start with the earliest memories I have of my father. I was not even three years old years. I had hurt myself playing and I got a really bad blood poisoning with the street going up here. And of course, as you know, I'm not the youngest person back then. We had no phones, no cars, no emergency facilities as we have now. So my father bundled me up and carried me about three kilometers to the family doctor in the middle of the night as that. At that. I got well really quickly because uh, the doctor was a personal friend as well. So the next thing I remember is I wasn't much older and I ran away from home. Well, that's what they told me. I didn't think so. I was just going to visit grandma, okay? And, uh, but that was also half an hour through the city. Fortunately, father had noticed that and he followed me. And just as he came to grandmother's house, he caught up with me. He gave me a big wallet. It didn't really hurt so much, but it hurt my feelings. Okay, my father doing that to me. Anyways, he I was put in the room next to the kitchen where he and grandmother had some coffee, and I heard him say, I gave her a big wallop. And it hurt me more than her. Do you know there was a gleeful little girl at the other side of the door? I mean, it was just, well, the, thing, the way things go. And I deliberately uh, started with <coughs> these two stories uh, to show you how my father was, the epitome, I think it is, uh, how my father was and how he always thought of others and tried to protect them. And uh, I have to look here. <laughs> Uh, however, World War II was approaching, and uh, as luck would have it, my father was not drafted into the army because he was a blacksmith by trade, but as the war was approaching, it, his knowledge and his uh, competency and many others were needed somewhere else. So no blacksmithing, but working at the ship's wharf, building and preparing seaworthy vessels. That still was a good thing because he wasn't drafted, but it also invited the foreign armies to Bournemouth day and night. So that wasn't all that much uh, fun. 
Uh, by this time, I also was in uh, my early teens, and uh, my school, where I went to school, and uh, my father's work was sort of halfway between our homes. So we always met after work, after school, and walked home together to share our uh, daily experiences. Some of them were really good, and others were not. Being wartime, we were always hungry. We were never satisfied after uh, a meal. So on the weekends, when father was not working, he would uh, take his bicycle and would go out into the farm landscape, uh, selecting seasonal fruits and gleaning for potatoes, always getting something home to the children. Because by now, we had, uh, I had two brothers, and the youngest being born in 42, but at the height of the war. During all these hardships, uh, father never lost his love for singing, both at home and with a group of uh, friends. And I remember that each Father's Day, they would go out in the forest and just have a good time there, I guess, hiking. Coming back in late afternoon, the, all the families would wait for them because we could hear them from singing from far away. Now, neither my father nor all his friends, they were drinking. Not at all. That may be a little bit strange in this country because here we think we have to drink something all the time. Well, okay, drinking, yes, but no alcohol. <laughs> anyway, so my father and all his friends, they were active sportsmen. They didn't pursue the same sports, but they, they sort of um, recognized each other. My father was a boxer and uh, welterweight, if that means anything to you. And uh, he, he accomplished and had more than 150 successful fights. Quite often he came home being stitched up, you know, right here in the face or there, or the nose, or bloody, something like that. But uh, he was quite successful. I still have some of his little Olympic trophies at home, which is really good to look at. Um, my mother also was uh, into <coughs> sports. She was a gymnast. And all their friends, of course, were into sports. And they would go out together, always taking me with being the only child. So in effect, I had lots of parents. One day, they went out to the beach and were swimming. And again, I was only three or three and a half years old. They left me up on the pier, like the one we have in White Rock. What do you think I did? I jumped in. <laughs> it was right in the ocean. Deep. They just scooped me up, put me on their back, and kept on swimming. And not a harsh word from any one of them. The camaraderie they had between themselves was just extended to me, and I was part of them. That was all there is to it. And now I forgot again. Yep. So. Actually, this is finished. This is something a little bit after. I fondly remember all these uh, days with uh, my father mainly. I actually, not too long again, I actually went with him to training, boxing training. Not the boxing, but we were skipping ropes together, and I was even learned some sparring. You know what sparring means in the boxing? It's a little bit unusual for a 16-year-old girl, but. Anyways, that's the way it went. And when I think back, I think having a strong, both physically and emotionally strong father was the best thing that could happen to me. And I think in our current society, it's sadly lacking. Children get the uh, materialistic things and no company from their parents. And I think I leave it at that. There's much more. <laughs> you can read it if you want. <laughs>